Hey guys, how's it going? Firebox here. There have been a lot of comparisons recently with Dark and Darker and the new game called Dungeonborn that is attempting to enter the PvPVE dungeon crawler space. I've played the open alpha, which is currently available on Steam for about 30 hours, and I wanted to give my review going over the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's go ahead and get started. First things first, let's get into the good. Time to kill feels decent with the ability to have longer engagements. From what I've noticed, most of my fights are decently drawn out. It's pretty rare that I get completely insta-killed. I think a big part of this is that your HP seems decently large. Instead of having a base of around 80 to 100, you're sitting at anywhere from 400 all the way up to I've seen 800 plus. Because of this, you can take quite a few hits in a fight, and you have the ability to back off and heal through bandages and red pots, which heal a significant amount of health, allowing more long, drawn-out fights, at least in solos. I have not played teams yet. I think the game also feels this way, because rogues do not have true invisibility, so you're not getting snuck up on from someone you physically cannot see, and getting killed from 100 to 0 from them. As long as you're paying attention, you generally will be able to see a rogue shimmer if they're invisible. Charge attacks and repose on multiple weapons make the combat feel like there's more counterplay. A lot of weapons will have charge attacks and ways to use the right mouse to block in a way that you can repost after blocking, which just generally feels decent. It does feel a little bit clunky right now. I'm going to chalk that up to it being alpha. If they can make it feel more refined, I think it could be a decent combat system. Servers seem generally stable without any significant amounts of rubber banding. I've noticed a little bit of issue here and there, which is to be expected, but nothing significant that I have personally seen. Skills, from my experience, feel impactful, while most of them feel imbalanced. One example I could give is the Fighter Whirlwind I thought was completely overpowered and broken. Until you realize that blocking is really good in this game and will cause you to take almost no damage. If a fighter whirlwinds while you're blocking with a shield, you're going to take almost nothing and you're able to counterattack after blocking as well. So you'll probably end up dealing even more damage to them. And I think having that level of counterplay is important in games like this. The only skill that I think needs tuned is probably the rogue petrify ability but we'll go into that a little bit later. Loot feels pretty impactful in this game, with finding green and blue feeling kind of rare. This could be seen as a good or a bad thing, but I think it's good. It's possible the loot might be a little bit too rare, because I haven't even seen a purple yet, and seeing a blue is a little bit insane. But hard mode is supposed to be releasing soon, which I'm sure is going to change the amount of gear that we're seeing, so I'm going to hold off on talking about that any further. I like that there is a full mini-map with meaningful icons letting you know the location of bosses. I think this is just generally nice to have. Instead of having the requirement of players to learn the map completely, at least you have the option to check your map if you need to know where a important key of interest is. I personally think this is great. Portals having the downside of noise while activating, but having a countermeasure of being able to collect a scroll for safer extract seems generally good. It seems like there's also decent class diversity, most feeling okay to play in solos, except maybe the priest feeling the weakest, but outside of that, it seems like everything's relatively balanced, but it is very early alpha, and metas have not formed yet, but for now, from my experience, I'm gonna label that as a positive, but we'll have to see as time goes. Bosses seem to give a decent challenge without constantly fearing getting third partied. The map seems big enough that you can confidently fight a mini boss or boss without someone coming up to you while you're doing it. And there seems to be a decent challenge involved. Some cheesing definitely there available, which I don't think is uncommon in other games similar to this. But if you're fighting it fairly, you definitely need to pay attention and make sure that you're not dying to them. And I do just want to say the solo map is fantastic. I think it's really well designed with a lot of high ground, low ground areas and different places to get to. It really does feel like you're exploring a giant castle, which I like. There also seems to be no real ranged oppression. Crossbows deal decent damage, but don't feel overpowered. There's no bows that are shooting very quick, dealing almost all your health. 
within a second or two, which I really like. Most combat feels very melee focused, and then you do have the mages that do have range, but again, I think that's more enjoyable than having a ranged meta with bows. And the final good is additional abilities are unlocked through stats while you're building up your gear, which I think is a generally good way to build out your class. I think this is nice because you can look at how much strength, for example, you need. And if you hit that threshold, you unlock a new ability that your class now has unlocked, which feels better than just adding a few extra damage points or HP points. All right, now I want to talk about the bad there is no sheath weapon to move faster. You have to hold a torch or consumable, which just generally feels weird. There's no option for skills on classes. You're always forced to use the same two skills. I get it's an alpha game, but only having two options so every class is always exactly the same just feels a little bit off. So I really hope to see additional skills added in the future. You cannot look all the way up or down, which feels awful in practice. I don't think there's any excuse for this. When you're trying to look up or down, you will get hard stuck at a certain point and you cannot look up or down any further, which just feels really bad and they definitely need to fix it. The AI animations are sometimes questionable. For example, if you're hitting a zombie that's coming up from the ground, it will teleport to a full standing position and it just looks very strange i think there's definitely work that can be done in general to the ai boss chests can also be grabbed without defeating it which doesn't really make sense boss loot also just generally feels not that great so you're incentivized to run past the boss open the chest and then leave the area and leave the boss alone which i don't really think makes for enjoyable gameplay there should definitely either be more incentive to fight the boss or make the loot from the boss locked and make you have to kill it first. Consumables also feel very constricted to use because it only allows you to have two on your hotbar, but when you try to open up your inventory to change out for a different consumable, your game freezes completely, not allowing you to move, so doing it mid-combat is very, very difficult, which means you don't really get to utilize a mixture of consumables. You're kind of locked to two, maybe three if you're quick during a fight which i think just limits your options i would like to see the ability to move while your inventory's up and maybe add additional consumables usable from your hotbar finally the ai feels extremely easy to me maybe it's because i'm coming from dark and darker which i think the ai is generally difficult it's pretty simple but i think the ai just feels gently just feels harder than this game does However, I constantly see people dying to the base AI, so maybe this is still the right play. I'm putting it in bad because I really feel like the AI, it's slow, the attacks are very limited range. They're pretty easy to read. The only real challenge seems to be mini bosses and bosses, which again can be cheesed. But maybe that's just going to work for this game because the general population, there are still players that are dying to these mobs. Maybe that's just how it needs to be. Finally, I want to talk about the ugly. First things first, spawn rushing new players seems to be an issue. Some being very close to each other once you learn where everyone is. This is something that has been an issue in Dark and Darker, especially from Goblin Caves, where you would spawn very, very close to someone. You would rush them, and if they're a new player, or regardless, they would just die. And it doesn't really feel great playing for 5 or 10 seconds and then immediately getting rushed by a player. And gear can feel quite powerful on the higher end. It seems like if you have full blues, purple type gear, you are pretty much steamrolling anyone who is near starter kit. Which, yeah, there needs to be incentive for having higher gear. But if a new player is getting spawn rushed by a guy in full purples, they're not going to have a very enjoyable time. There is a hard mode being added soon, which will give incentive for these geared players to go play there. But we're going to have to wait and see if the incentive is enough to keep these players from just gear stomping these lower level lobbies. There's also no red solo portals, meaning that there is a lack of solo content. It's already been proven from Dark and Darker that there is a very large majority of players that are solo. And the lack of specifically solo content feels like a very big downside for me because I'm primarily a solo player. 
Maybe it's my bias talking, but I think a priority should be having red portals allowed in solos as well as teams to not restrict content based on your group size. Rogue Petrify and their general speed just feels oppressive in solos. The 6 second stun that they do to you allows you to completely reset a fight while healing to full without any real counterplay. In teams, you can hit your teammate, but in solo, if they hit you, they're going to get a full bandage off, they're going to use all their consumables, or they might just run away and you're never going to catch them because their movement speed is very, very high. I think if they just reduced the Petrify ability by a bit or made it a very heavy slow instead, it would feel more fair. But for now, it just feels a little bit too strong. And I think for an ability to not be considered oppressive, it needs to have counterplay. And I don't feel like there's counterplay to Solo Rogue right now that has Petrify. Combat also can feel pretty clunky at times. For example, your shields will just not block in combat while right-clicking which is kind of annoying and will get you hit or killed if a fighter comes up and whirlwinds you and shielding is the counter and your game just decides that they don't want to shield you will just die in a fight where you probably shouldn't have died in the top enemy before which i feel like is a pretty big issue in a game where you're dropping all of your gear from death mouse smoothing also has no options so it just generally feels a little bit weird when you're playing the game you do get used to it but i think the general movement just feels better in Dark and Darker than this game does. Footsteps are also very, very quiet, perhaps not even hearing somebody until they're two inches from you and then you get hit in the back, including classes that should be heavier, such as a fighter would. And in a game where audio is important, it's definitely something that should be addressed because bad audio can give a bad experience while you're playing. I wanted to add one final note here at the end. Everything in my list was primarily gameplay focused, but I want to quickly go over some of the main menu functionalities such as the marketplace, merchants, etc. In general, I enjoy the auction house, the fact that there is a unidentified portion where you can find gear and sell it without having to worry about stats, but you can also pay a fee to sell gear that has really good rolled stats. The system feels okay. But I haven't used it enough to really give enough opinion on it outside of that. And I also want to say that the merchants have some good and bad to them. Some of it feels a little bit clunky. For example, if you want to craft a bunch of potions, but you don't want to craft a max stack because you have a lot of leftover material, you have to constantly click down in order to craft a lower amount. There also seems to be a lot of gems that can be found in dungeon but the blacksmith doesn't really get to see much use because there isn't really very much gear at all that can be used for socketing. I thought about adding these to the list, but I just wanted to give these as final notes. That's going to be everything I wanted to talk about. I'm sure there's more, but I'm going to leave it there just to get my key points out there. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, be sure to give the video a like. Sub to the channel for future content and comment below what you're thinking about this game, how you feel about this list, and what you're hoping to see in the future. I am very curious. And I do want to take a moment to thank Kid Brutal for supporting this video alongside all my other members. Thank you all. Have a great day. I'm also going to let the rest of this match play out. I did get a little bit more PvP in. Feel free to stick around for that if you like.